keep breathing through your nose. Imagining you can breathe down to the base of your spine and exhale slowly. We're going to rotate the palms and lift up the fingertips towards the ceiling. And you might find that as you lift your fingertips, you want to rib, lift up your rib cage. And what I want you to practice is bringing your rib cage backwards. So if your rib cage starts to lift up, you're going to bring your rib cage back down. So imagining your base of your rib cage and you're trying to make it parallel to the floor you may find that you pull in a bit through your belly. You might not notice any difference. We're gonna take the arms out wide. I'm gonna turn your palms down. You're gonna bring your elbows and your arms behind you and hold onto your elbows. So holding onto your elbows bringing your shoulder blades in. And then we're going to turn to one side. So back to centre and we're going to place the legs the other way around. So if you're in easy pose, the other heel comes in front. If you're just in a cross leg position, just cross your legs the other way around. Let's turn to face the other way. Coming back to centre, place your feet now so the soles are together and you're going to hold just above your ankles in a bound cobbler and you're going to move your knees up and down. So keep like fluttering your knees. You want to feel like your um, inside of your thigh is pulling your legs up. And then you're going to squeeze, so you're tightening your butt, so you're tightening the glute medius, and that's going to help put your knees out down to the base, so down towards the mat. So you're squeezing your bum, and then you're going to relax, your knees might pop up. So you're going to squeeze your bum, and then your knees will pop up as you relax and so squeeze your bum again. See if you can get any closer to the floor. One side will always feel better than the other. And then relax. Let's take our feet now and place them beside us. So if you're sitting on some cushions, I want you to just lean forward a little bit. Your feet should be about a little bit wider than your hips. And your knees are traveling in the same way your feet are. So if your feet are very out, and you want to make sure your knees are following your toes. And then you're going to lean forward. So you're still sitting on your cushions, but you're going to lean forward so you can feel uh, the weight into your hips. So we're in a squat, but we're sitting down. So it shouldn't feel horrible on the knees or anything painful at all. We'll just stay here. You're going to take your elbows to the inside of your knees, place your palms together and feel like you're extending up through the crown of your head. So you want to feel like, see how I'm scrunched down like this and then I kind of extend and I can feel like I'm crunching down and you're going to extend. So you want to push into your knees and your knees push back into your elbows and you feel like you're coming out of your hips. You will feel that in your hips, hopefully. So it shouldn't be too hard. Your feet should be flat to the mat and it could be easy to do that because we've got the cushions underneath. And then we're gonna crunch down. So you're gonna round the back, tuck the chin. Good. 
and then we're going to extend again through the crown of your head we're going to round again tucking the chin and then we'll extend again brilliant coming onto your hands and knees now move those cushions out of the way <clears throat> and into your rhomboid push-ups the arms are straight you're in a box position and your shoulder blades are moving across your back and you want to get them to be really free as if you're squeezing your shoulder blades together and then you're pushing up and they're sliding open. I'll do a few more of those. Excellent. And then come back into a puppy pose, taking your fingertips to the end of your mat and we're going to come down towards the mat, keeping the hips high in a puppy pose. I want you to pull your belly up now so you can feel your belly, pull your belly up. Like you're taking your belly button up towards your spine. Breathe. Still being able to breathe, but pulling our belly in. And then coming up onto hands and knees. Let's come into a cat cow and let your back relax. In your box position, push up from your hands and your knees. And we're going to pull our belly up. So we're not going to change our back. We're not coming into cat. You're just going to pull your belly up and under your rib cage. So it should feel like you're pulling your belly button up and then it wants to feel like it's moving forward. As if you're pulling it up and sucking it under your rib cage. You want to stay held like that for a moment, still being able to breathe through your nose. And then you're going to relax your belly. So we're going to pull our belly button up and feel like we're sucking it under the root cage. Breathe. And then release and relax. Okay, this time we're going to pull the belly button up. You're going to inhale. And as you exhale, we're going to pull the belly button up more. So you feel like you're sucking your belly in and you're going to hold it there. You're going to inhale, keeping your belly button sucked in. And as you exhale, suck your belly button up a little bit more. Stay there. Keeping that belly button held in. Still being able to breathe through your nose. And then you're going to relax. Come back now into, extend, into extended child pose or puppy pose if this is too much. And then come back up onto hands and knees. I'm going to come onto our butt <coughs> and lay down onto the mat. Have your knees bent. So you're going to do the same. You're going to inhale. And as you exhale, you're going to pull your belly button in and hold it there. Keep it in. As you inhale, as you exhale, you're going to pull your belly button down. So you feel it coming underneath the rib cage. Keep it down as you inhale, you're going to exhale and pull your belly button in and you're going to hold it there. Okay, still being able to breathe, but you're holding your belly button in. Exhale, pull it in. Hold there. And then relax and just let your whole of your belly come out. So this is what you want to feel like you're doing. When I say hollow embrace, you want to feel that your belly button is coming in and you can hold it there, but you can still breathe. So can you see like there's a little concave of my belly? 
You're going to breathe in again as you exhale, bring that belly button down, and then we're going to take our feet off the mat. So you want to feel like a really strong around your belly, taking your feet off the mat. You're going to touch a heel to the mat and bring that leg up. So we'll touch a heel and bring the leg up. Keep moving. Pulling that belly button down, breathing. Breathe a bit, keep moving those legs, alternating heels to the mat. Draw the knees in. Gentle rock from side to side. And then extend both legs and take the arms above your head. Interlace your fingers, push your palms away. So you're really stretching your whole body out. Let's take your hands to the right hand corner of the mat and your feet to the right hand corner so we're in a side bend. And then our feet to the left hand corner and our arms to the left hand corner. And a side bend on the other side. Coming back to the center, I want you to pull your belly button in. So you're pulling your belly button in. I'm going to take our head off the mat. You want to feel that your belly is coming in. So you might use your fingers on your belly button and you're going to take your feet off the mat as well. Breathe. And then come back down again. Okay, you're going to pull your belly button in and take your head off the mat. Then take your feet off the mat, breathe. And come back down to the mat. Bending your knees now and pushing up into half bridge. <coughs> Excuse me. So inhale, can you see my belly coming up as you inhale? And as you exhale, I'm gonna pull your belly button in. Stay there. Inhale, and as you exhale, pull your belly button down so you can feel the base of your belly pulling in now. Inhale, and as you exhale, pull your belly button in. So you now have a concave belly. You're going to take your arms over the top. Interlace your fingers. Push your palms away. Inhale, and as you exhale, pull your belly in again, and then bring your hands up. So you're pushing your palms away, but you're bringing your hands up. Stay here. Stay here, keeping that belly pulled in. And then we'll bring our arms beside us and then slowly come down and just gently rock the knees from side to side. Hug a knee into your chest and extend a leg. And then we'll hug the other knee in and extend the other leg. Bring both knees into your chest and we're gently rocking from backwards and forwards. Hopefully you're on something padded. And you're going to rock all the way round so you get to the other side of your mat without banging into my sofa. <laughs> your feet are now where your head was and your head is now where your feet was. Then we're going to go round the other side. So you go all the way round to your back where you started from. Then we're going to lift up to seated again. Okay, sitting up nice and tall. Take yourself into a 
uh, rotation, use the back of your wrist on your knee to lock yourself in place and we'll raise the back arm. Inhale, as you exhale, bring the belly in again and then lift the front arm so you stay in a rotation. You're still going to breathe. And then we're going to come back to the center. Let's draw across the legs the other way around. Rotate to the other side. Use that back of the hand to lock. So you're pushing your wrist against your knee. This will help you lock in place as you raise your back arm. Inhale, as you exhale, take the belly back in again. Lock it there. Raise the front arm. You can still breathe, although talking is hard. <laughs> Still breathing to the chest, but you're pulling that belly in. And then we'll rotate to the front. Let's come into a side bend and stretch out the waist. Coming to the other side, side bend. Bring yourself back to centre, hinge from your hips and we'll walk forward with the fingertips and then rounding the back, tucking the chin into a fold. And then bring yourself all the way up to seated. Let's take a foot and place it to the floor. So we're sat with one knee as if it's like a cross leg. So your knee's flat to the floor, you're turning your foot. And the other foot is flat to the floor, so you've got your L, uh, knee bent. You're going to hold on to that knee so you can sit up nice and tall. Now, the only people who might be tricky in that is Belinda and... Christine, and you want to use your blocks beside you and that will help steady you because you'll have more um, traction basically on your arms. You can do it yourself if you've got cushions as well. You can always turn your cushions over and it will help you use your arms in this rather than just using your legs. So if you're using your cushions next to you, you can use your hands as well and you can push onto that standing foot and come down again. Otherwise, you're just going to use your stomach to push yourself up. So as you come up, you're pushing your fingers to the floor, but you're going to have to pull in your belly a little bit to pull your hips up off the mat. I hope that makes sense. If you are using your hands on cushions, you'll put more of the weight through the upper body. So you'll be using your shoulders more. If your hands are just to the back and, and you're pushing onto that foot, you're going to use your belly more. And then we're going to come back again. Let's go to the other side. So one foot comes down as if you're crossing your legs and the other foot is to the floor. And you're going to hold on and you're going to lift up. So you have to pull in through your belly a little bit. So this is a sort of easy swinging lola. Swinging Lola is quite a challenging pose, but this is kind of easier to do. And we're bringing ourselves back down again. So you're going to hold on to a knee, you're going to push yourself up. You have to use your belly to pull in. And then you're going to come back down again. Let's do it one more time. You're going to push up. And then we're going to come back down again. Take the legs out wide. We hinge from our hips and come forward just slightly. And breathe. And 
and then bring the legs in and we'll come onto our knees. Okay, onto your hands and knees. You're going to have the toes onto the mat into a box position and we're going to lift the knees off the mat like so and then place them back down again. So you're going to lift your knees off the mat and place them down again. So you've got to use that lower part of the belly to lift up and come back down again. Do that one more time, lifting up and come back down again. Last one, you're going to lift up and come back down again and then let's come back into a child pose and just allow ourselves to rest here. And breathe. back up onto hands and knees. So starting in a box position, you have your knees below your hips and your wrists below your shoulders. You're then going to move your hands one space forward. So imagine the length of your hands, the other hand's going to come in front of that. So your hands are going to move one space forward now that your hands are in front of your shoulders. And then you slide your shoulders over so that they're now on top of your wrists. So you don't want to come so forward that your shoulders are in front of your hands. You want to have the wrist and elbow and shoulders in line. You should be able to feel that through your belly. We're only going to do a few of these because they're challenging. All you're going to do is tuck your toes and without moving your shoulders, you're going to take your knees off the mat and breathe and then come back down again. You can do this on your elbows, you can do it from forearms like so and all you do is tuck your toes and you take your heels and extend them so you're keeping yourself very flat. Breathe and then take the knees to the mat. So you tuck your toes, you're pushing your heels away you're going to breathe because you're using the whole of your belly and then take your knees back down to the mat. We'll do it one last time, you're just tucking your toes, extending your legs so that you come into your bridge, or sorry, your plank. Breathe, you're going to come down onto your knees, down onto your elbows now so you're like this and then place your belly to the mat in sphinx pose and just allow back to stretch and due to the mat. We're in sphinx pose now and just relax here. Let's come down to the mat, stack the hands, turn the feet out and rest in crocodile pose. Back your hands and turn to face the other way. Place your forehead to the mat, line up ankles, knees and hips and take your arms out and extend them. And we're going to come up into locust pose. Place your arms off the mat, chest off the mat, sides off the mat. And then we're going to flutter arms and legs. As if you're swimming, well, kind of swimming. <laughs> Keep fluttering. Breathe. Don't forget to breathe. Fluttering arms, fluttering legs. And then rest down on your mat and relax. Okay, let's do that one more time. Forehead to the mat, arms out in front, legs in line with the hips 
and then lifting your chest off, lifting your thighs off, and then we're flutter. Arms and legs moving up and down. Breathing while you're doing it. Don't forget to breathe. Don't hold your breath. Keep going. And then we'll rest again, forehead to the mat. Come up into a sphinx pose. And just rest here. And then we'll push back up into hands and knees and come back into extended child pose or puppy pose and rest. Come up onto hands and knees and into a cat cow. And then we'll tuck the toes. And you're going to push yourself up onto your heels. Bum is in the air and into a forward fold, chest to thighs, let the head hang. So my knees are really bent here. So keeping your knees bent, you're going to take your arms and the hands and walk yourself to the end of the mat. So you're really stretching the whole of your body out. And then you're going to walk your feet in. But what I want you to make sure is you bring your knees in like so. And you take your toe to the mat and you're bringing the knees in. So you're crawling to the front and then into your fold. Taking your hands to the mat, we're going to crawl all the way back. So you're into a plank. Breathe and then bring your hands to your feet. Bending your knees, you come back onto your feet. And then let's Take our hands back to the top and you're going to bring your knees in so you're bear walking to the front of the mat. Sole the feet to the mat, let your head hang into forward fold. And then we'll slowly roll all the way up. Ah, oh, lovely. Let's come to standing. I'm just going to remove the jumper, it's getting warm in here. Okay. Let's have our feet really wide now. Take your toes so they're pointing outwards and you're going to sink back down into a goddess pose, palms together. Try to keep your body upright. You're going to sink, sink, sink and then we're going to push up. We're going to come back down into goddess pose. You're going to challenge yourself. So we're going to sink, sink, sink. Try not to get too low and then push up. So you're going to sink, sink, sink. And then come all the way up. Last one we're going to hold. So you're going to come down to where it feels comfortable. Then you're going to go just that little bit lower. So you've got to stick the bum behind you. You're going to stay there. Breathe. And then we'll push all the way up. Turning our foot to the side and come down into a lunge. Back knee comes to the mat and we'll lift up into crescent moon. Breathe. Taking the hands down to the mat, tuck the back toes, you're in your lunge. 
and you're going to walk round the front and turn to the other side. Back knee comes to the mat and lift up into crescent lunge. Breathe. Hands come down to the mat, tuck the back toe. You're going to walk yourself round, keeping your body low and come down to the other side in the lunge. Drop the back knee and lift up into crescent moon. We'll do last couple, tuck the back toe, and keeping your body low, you're going to walk all the way around. Back knee drops, lift yourself into crescent moon. Come down to the mat, tuck the back toe. We're going to keep ourselves into the centre now. You're going to heel toe yourself in. And if you can, drop down into a low squat or a high squat is your option. And breathe. Palms together. Again, we're trying to keep our head up. So if you've got your cushions, you can always put your cushions below you, especially if your feet are not flat to the floor. You can always sit onto the base of your cushions and have your feet and just practice getting your knees above your hips. We stay here and then come down to the mat and extend both legs. Take the fleshy part of your butt behind you, sitting up tall and we're flexing the foot so your toes are sticking up towards the ceiling and your hands are beside you in staff pose. Breathe. You're gonna hinge from the hips and come forward just a little bit. And then we're gonna bend the knees so that our chest comes towards our belly, comes towards our knees rather, and our chest towards our knees. And then round, tucking the chin. Breathe in your forward fold. And then slowly bring yourself up. We'll swivel round, come down onto your back. Gently rock from side to side. Okay, so we'll place the soles of the feet to the mat. And you're placing your ankle over your knee. What you want to make sure is that your ankle is past your leg so that the bony part of your ankle is not resting on your leg. And then you're going to hold onto your knee. So you're going to place your hand onto the knee that's bent and you're going to push your hand into your knee and your knee into your hand. So your knee is coming back into your hand and you're pushing your hand into your knee. Your legs are like in a ball shape, I guess. So. And then you're going to release. So you're going to push your hand into your knee and your knee back into your hand again. It doesn't need to press it hard. And then you're going to release. And we'll do it again. You're pushing your hand into your knee, your knee into your hand. And then release. And last time you push your hand into your knee, your knee into your hand. And then release. Taking your hands out now to shoulder height, and you're leaving your knee kind of falling away from you. You're going to rotate so that the foot comes down to the mat. And it's as if your ankle and knee 
that's nearest the floor are glued to each other. And this top knee is facing up towards the ceiling. And then we'll bring ourselves back to the center and swap to the other side. So the ankle comes over your leg, making sure that the ankle is past your leg and pushing your hand to your knee and your knee back into your hand. And you're just going to push like that for a bit. And then release. And then we'll push again. And release, last time. Oh, actually, we need to do it again, don't we? Four times. So you're pushing your knee back into your hand, your hand into your knee, and you're gonna release. And then last time, you're gonna push. You're pushing your knee back to your hand, your hand into your knee, release. And then you're rotating that foot down towards the mat. So that your knee and your ankle that are connected are on the mat. But the other knee, the top leg, is up towards the ceiling. Taking the arms at shoulder height to stay here. Let's take those knees back to the ceiling, soles of the feet to the mat, and then let the knees fall out. Soles of the feet together, so you're lying in reclined cobbler, palms are facing out. And again, this is, if you want to practice this at home, um, this is a great relaxing pose, and it's good to use cushions if you have time on your hands and you fancy letting your hips really relax. You put your cushions underneath your knees so that your legs are supported. You might need more than one cushion on each side. And you want it so that you're not feeling that your legs are falling into nowhere. They should feel supported. And then that way you'll be able to relax your bum and relax the lower back. And you should find that your knees start to fall out a little bit wider. So this is quite a good one to... Um, relax into and let your hips fully release and your bum relax as well. And you'll start to notice differences and changes in your hips after about 15 minutes, but you will ache a lot as you go to move. So go to move out of this pose if you've stayed in it for 15 minutes, then you need to go really, really slowly. You're just going to relax and breathe. Notice if your shoulders are tense, relax through your shoulders. Gently bring the knees together and gently rock them from side to side to side. Extend one leg and bring a knee into your chest. And then we'll take that sole of foot towards the ceiling. You can hold underneath your thigh 
or underneath your foot into half a happy baby. And extend that leg, so you might have to hold on to your um, ankle to do that and extend your leg out and then bring it down again, bending the knee into half a happy baby. So we're going to extend that leg and then bring it down again into half a happy baby. And let's come to the other side, bring the knee into your chest. So all the foot comes towards the ceiling, holding underneath the foot or underneath the thigh into half a happy baby. And extend that leg. And then bring it back down again into half a happy baby. Or extend that leg again. And take it back into half a happy baby. And then bring both soles of the feet to the mat and gently rock the knees from side to side. And then we can put on something warm or get a cushion behind your head or a blanket if you need. Ready for relaxation. Jump up. <clears throat> okay, getting yourself comfortable on the floor. This week might be go around finding a stool that is quite low or piling up a few cushions it can be more than two you can go to three and then sitting on the top of that and getting your knee so that it's higher than your hip like you're in a squat but because you're supported it should feel easier you want to try and get those feet flat to the floor and try to get your heel towards your bum so that you're sitting in a squat supported with the cushions and you're just going to stay there for as long as you can bear and then practice doing that a few times this week and see if it makes any difference okay so settling yourself down onto your mat and just taking a deep breath and exhaling slowly Noticing the floor beneath you and allow your body to relax down onto the mat. I'm just seeing the whole of the underside of your body. And then as you exhale, relaxing and releasing. Let's think about the toes in our body scans. We're going to come down to the toes and the feet. And notice just your toes, just the soles of the feet. Being aware of the heels and the arch of your foot. And just in your mind's eye, traveling around every part of your foot, just thinking only about the feet. Noticing sensations that you might feel, or nothing at all.
Now you're moving slowly up into ankles and just thinking about the ankles and nothing else. Noticing the left ankle, the right ankle. And then moving into the shins and the calves. I'm just thinking about the shin and the calf. And then slowly up into the knees. Noticing your left knee and your right knee. And only thinking of the knees. Don't try not to let your mind wander, just think about how the knees feel. And then moving into the thighs and you're leaving the whole of the lower half of the legs behind. So you're just thinking about the thighs. And then slowly moving into the hips. And only thinking about the hips so that your legs are totally relaxed. Thinking about the hips pelvis your attention to your lower back so really relax both legs now just think about the lower back and you're breathing now and you're noticing your breath as you move into your belly and you're noticing the rise and fall of your belly as you breathe Just thinking about the belly rising and falling as you breathe in and out. And trying to tune into that sensation of your body moving with your breath. Noticing that connection of movement as the breath inhales and exhales. And coming up the spine now and into the shoulders. And then we're taking our attention to our left shoulder and only our left shoulder. Moving down the left arm to the left elbow. From the elbow to the left forearm. And from the forearm to the left wrist. Relaxing the left hand and all of the fingers. And then coming back up the left arm to the left shoulder and now relaxing the whole of the left arm and taking your attention to your right shoulder. Coming down the right shoulder to the right elbow. And from the right elbow to the right wrist. Noticing the right palm of the hand. And only thinking about the palm of the hand and then moving slowly up from the right wrist to the right elbow. Back into the right shoulder. 
Now both arms are relaxed and you're placing your attention to the back of your head on the mat. Thinking about the back of your head and your eyes softly closed. And relaxing the jaw and the chin. The whole of the face relaxed, smoothing out the brow. Maybe swallowing, perhaps licking your lips, resting again, and now thinking about the breath as you can feel it at your nostrils. Perhaps you notice your belly again. Just noticing as you breathe in and out. Thinking just about the breath. Letting any thoughts drift past. And then bringing your attention back into the room but still noticing your breath, maybe having your eyes open now, but just letting yourself relax. Not moving your body, just thinking about being in the room, but noticing your breath. And then maybe starting to move fingers or toes, perhaps stretching if you need. Deepening that breath, really stretching the fingers out, perhaps yawning, stretching the hands above the head, <clears throat> slowing yourself up to seated. In your comfortable cross leg position, as you take the breath down to the base of the spine, and exhale back to the skull. Inhale down to the base of the spine. Exhale to the skull. Rotate the palms to heart center. Namaste. Thank you very much. Just allow yourself to have the rest of the day relaxed or practicing this again, just taking bits and bobs out of the practice and just seeing what you can do with it just to help yourself maybe with a hip mobilization, etc. Thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Thank you.